Hi, my name's Dee, I'm the founder of Mint, and I'm joined again by Zoe, who's a nutritional therapist. She's been talking to us about male hormones, and today we're gonna to be covering part three, where we'll be talking about hair loss and sex drive for men. So Zoe, hair loss can be quite a big issue for men. Can you talk to us a bit more about this in relation to hormones? Yeah, there's um, many, many factors that um, can contribute to hair loss. Um, hormones being one. So again, I'm not gonna go through all of the hormones, um, but basically the usual scenario too much insulin, too much cortisol, too much testosterone, too little testosterone, or too much conversion of testosterone to that DHT, the dihydrotestosterone, which is a very, very potent form of, of testosterone that can, in some cases, contribute to, to hair loss. Um, so, so that's a sort of um, what would you say, the overall look at hormones. You then have to look at gut health because um, obviously we've talked before about the importance of good nutrient uptake and that really correlates to the health of the gut. So every day we need to be having some cooked vegetables and fruits some uh, raw fruits and vegetables and some fermented uh, vegetables because that gives us a good balance of all of our probiotics, all of our bugs, <laughs> good a good range of bugs in the gut so that what we eat we're actually absorbing because if we haven't got the nutrients, you know, the last thing our body is going to bother with is our hair. It's going to sequester everything to keep us alive, our, our organs alive, our glands healthy, um, our circulation, you know, you name it. It's not going to bother with, with this bit that hangs off the end. <laughs> so, um, you know, so that is why um, good hair quality is a sign of good, of reasonably good health, of, of good vitamin uptake and absorption. Um, so pay attention to, um, to gut health. And also because, um, if you have a poor quality diet, then you are more prone to have something called leaky gut. And this is where the junctions, at, the junctions in the gut become loosened, if you like, and it can let factors um, into the bloodstream that shouldn't be there that can then set up autoimmune conditions. So sometimes hair loss can be due to deficiencies, but it can also be due to autoimmune. So things like alopecia, where you have more of the, um, you know, sort of circular hair loss or clumps of hair loss, as opposed to sort of generalized hair loss, then that can be an autoimmune condition. And that can be remedied by removing gluten from the diet and paying attention to gut health. You can lower any sort of what we call autoimmune antibodies that can affect the hair. Um, one thing I would say, there is a genetic um, factor in hair loss. It's about 20 to 30% of hair loss is due to genetic factors and there's not much you can do about them. So that is something to be, um, to be aware of. So what are the factors that uh, affect the hair? So anything that affects the growing phase of the hair because we have a, a sort of growing phase and uh, we need that obviously to be as long as possible and then we have a shedding phase and you know we don't want we don't want to be shedding our hair more than we should be so I won't go into those phases you can you can look them up on google but about anything that disrupts the growth and and then exacerbates the shedding phase is obviously going to create more hair fall so first of all, good scalp hygiene. So if you have, a lot of men can get, you know, folliculitis or psoriasis or eczema into the scalp. Again, pay attention to the diet, look at the gut, look at malabsorption, because these factors can massively affect these conditions. Um, but you can use topical things um, to improve and maybe um, exfoliate the scalp slightly so that you haven't got a buildup of skin on the scalp that is definitely gonna to contribute to um, the 
the um, follicle not being as well, you know, nutrition not getting to it and it not having as much, much oxygenation and therefore will exacerbate the hair pull. So lots you can do just sort of kind of topically. Um, we covered autoimmune and alopecia. So again, that is something that if you can have a stress, stress sort of element, because um, stress, stress affects the gut, affects the malabsorption, can contribute to the leaky gut, and it goes around in a circle. And again, you can pay attention, definitely improve alopecia even. Um, stress plays into it massively in some people. You'll notice that quite often, if you look at a woman or a man who has massive hair fall, then you say to them, what happened six months before? Did you have a stressful event? Because the hair doesn't necessarily fall immediately. It falls, but it, you know, that cycle of shedding gets worse. And then six months later, you suddenly go, oh my goodness, I go to the shower, I've got this hair in the sink. So stress plays into it. So checking your cortisol, not too high, not too low, keep it in balance. Again, we talk testosterone. So testosterone that's too high and too much conversion to DHT. We discussed in our previous interview how you can lower that um, conversion to dihydrotestosterone. Um, you can take some inhibitors to stop that becoming too aggressive. Um, don't take medications though, please, because they're not good. <laughs> there are some medications that um, you can go and to uh to the doctor to get and i would highly recommend you follow a natural route first before you resort to those kind of medications um also high prolactin level prolactin is another hormone that we make that if it gets too high in men can contribute to hair shedding anemia um, men don't tend to suffer with that as much as women and certainly men can have too high uh either hemoglobin or ferritin um, but certainly if you are anemic, then that is going to definitely play into to hair loss. Thyroid dysfunction happens in men and women, and usually low thyroid will definitely contribute in, to people who are susceptible to a greater sort of hair shedding. Toxic met metals is another one, and a lot of people are like, oh, what do you mean toxic metals? But it's amazing how we can, um, have too many in our diet you know if we're eating too much tuna and you know um shark and those sort of heavy pelagic fish that are very very high in metal and then we wrap all our food in aluminium and we put aluminium spray under our arms when we use the deodorants um, these are all metals that the body has no clue what to do with. They're highly toxic. They're very hard to detoxify. We have amalgam fillings. It's another massive cause. Or you go and have root canal treatment, and all of a sudden, all of the, the um, metals from the mouth have gone down into the stomach. Um, you know, it's amazing how you can quickly build up um, toxic metal issues and they are very hard to detoxify and they can definitely contribute to to hair loss um, and then just generally low vitamin b um, some people take biotin for skin, skin hair and nails and low vitamin d because that's a pre-hormone make sure all your hormones are working and just just general good um, mineral and vitamin um, if, you know just just a good amount of, of through through natural sources um so all of those can contribute so a lot lots of factors it's and it's getting to the the one that's getting it is kind of making your condition worse um and that can involve sometimes quite a lot of testing and, and just uh, to confirm when you mentioned um anemia so that would be looking at your iron levels and the um also vitamin C to absorb the iron as well. Yes, That's correct. Exactly. Yeah. So if you have a low, if you have low um, iron, then um, vitamin C taken at the same time will increase your iron absorption. Yeah. Um, and avoiding taking things like um, uh, copper and zinc at the same time as your iron and vitamin B, you know, and calcium. Don't take calcium at the same time. So if that's your problem, then again, speak to a nutritionist or a functional doctor. This is my problem. How can I increase my iron levels? 
Okay. And is that because they affect the absorption of the iron? Is that why you're not meant to take them at the same time? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, lots of things. So um, lots of things fight. So a bit like hormones have receptor sites, vitamins have receptor sites too. And certainly calcium, zinc, iron and potassium all fight for the same receptor sites. Right. So this is why <laughs> you can have an imbalance of these. Um, and you have to be careful. You have to be careful, like, for example, supplementing massively with iron because or supplementing with zinc massively because it can disrupt those other key, horn, uh, key vitamins or minerals, rather. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, there's a bit of a nuanced science to it. So, yeah, you have to be careful. So can you maybe mention a few of the key things that we can add to our diet to help with hair loss? Yeah, first of all, we need to get a good um, supply of protein because our hair is a protein. So um, and I, I personally think that everybody should have a little bit of protein at each meal. keeps your blood sugar balanced. Um, so yeah, adequate protein. It's amazing people that don't get enough protein. Um, so that's really important. Um, in men, then reducing that um, estrogen, too much estrogen, uh, or too much high high testosterone by taking your brassica vegetables, making sure you're consuming lots of those, uh, reducing your cortisol, and you can take some adaptogenic herbs um, if you want to, like ashwagandha. You, a lot of people find pumpkin seed oil is really good because it contains zinc, and um, zinc is good for our hair and our general hormone health. Any complex vitamins um, and B vitamin, don't take too many, make sure it's a good source. Um, but B vitamins are vitally important to our hair and nails. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids are really good too. Make sure that it's, a, again, it's a good source of DHA or uh, EPA. Um, take those regularly. Remove grain and sugar particularly if you've got autoimmune conditions that are contributing to that hair loss. Um, and you think that definitely there's a gut, gut connection to your hair loss, then removing those temporarily, see if it makes a difference. Um, and adding things like almonds, chia seeds, walnuts, coconut, all of these things, good fatty acids, good protein, um, and then if you're going to have animal products, make sure they're organic grass fed. And if it's fish, then it's wild caught. So you're not consuming all of these, you know, hormones and antibiotics and everything else with the good source of protein. And all the metals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing that we wanted to talk about was um, sex drive and function. And if you can talk to us a little bit about how to improve that. Yes, um, we did talk about um, obviously testosterone quite in depth in the second interview. So if people haven't listened to that, then do shoot back. And because I go into a lot of detail there about that balance of insulin and cortisol and the testosterone. So testosterone um, obviously is the big male hormone that, um, you know, produced overnight so that men um, have a morning erection and generally have a, a reasonably good sex drive. So very important that testosterone levels are within uh, an optimal range. And we, again, we discuss what that is in, in the previous video. So, um, so again, it's the same old story here, <laughs> making sure your insulin isn't too high, making sure your stress hormones, cortisol are not too high that we've got adequate amounts of cholesterol that we can actually make the building blocks of those sex hormones because without the cholesterol, which is the mother and raw material to um, the cascade of hormones that comes from that, um, we are not gonna have an adequate um, supply of, um, cholesterol, uh, of um, testosterone. And also the other hormones that are also important like the progesterone and a little bit of estrogen. We, men still do need to make those hormones and they need to be nicely um, in balance and again we need you know things like the cholesterol not too high not too low good ratios so good ratios of hdl to ldl cholesterol 
um, not oxidized cholesterol because that's going to interfere with um, circulation and just you know our general uh, cardiovascular health so we need to make sure that um, our cardio health is important because you know there's actually a correlation between the penile artery and all the it and the heart artery so <laughs> if it, it turns out that you know the the artery in the penis has become blocked then that correlates directly to the heart so you know the two are very <laughs> are very connected. Um, connected in that way um so like say good testosterone to estrogen ratio so good level of testosterone and not too much estrogen and again we refer back to the previous um where we talk about how to lower estrogen if a male if a man needs to um and exercise is so important because it raises something called nitric oxide um a nitric oxide low nitric oxide is extremely damaging to the body it means that the circulation is bad it means that the oxygenation of the body is bad um, and again we increase nitric oxide through good foods um, a great source of nitric oxide is beetroot so you know lots of beets and and lots of exercise gets the circulation going we don't have to again we don't have to be crazy we just need to be consistent um, so and try and do some strength training a little bit of strength training a little bit of cardio and your nitric oxide will improve and that sometimes with um, just balancing those hormones will massively increase um, sex drive uh, and just your mood in general because you could have great testosterone levels but if you're just moody and life's awful and you know this is going to so many things impact your uh, your sex drive as well as just a purely physical your hormone level it's much much more subtle and it's much more complicated um, and then just eating good quality foods you know the simple things like uh, you know to raise your what we call our glutathione which is our master anti antioxidant um, and we do that again through good protein good food healthy non you know organic vegetables and fruits and then again just making sure that the vitamins that do directly uh, affect testosterone are adequate so adequate zinc get through you know good quality fish shellfish uh, beans lentils etc uh, enough vitamin d get that into optimal levels again it's the hormone and then medically and this is really important maybe i should have mentioned this at the beginning because i do like to <laughs> put the medical caveat make sure there is no blockage into it's very common for men to get a blockage into the testes it's a it's not a serious thing but it's something that medically needs to be looked at because that means then the hormone isn't getting through or getting out from the appropriate places and the feedback loop um, breaks down so um, always get that checked out medically as well Thanks for joining us again, Zoe, and for all your tips and your expertise. We'll be meeting again for part four, where we'll be talking about the effects of hormones on mood and mental health. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe below.